Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the shop once again. So today we have another engine teardown video for you. I've been teasing this engine all week long on social media, us changing it out, listening to it. Everybody's kind of speculating, why did this engine fail? So a little background here. It's a 2017 Ford F-150 Raptor, second gen 3.5 liter EcoBoost engine. Generally, they're pretty good engines besides the phasers up front here. Uh, I've seen a few of them fail, um, but they're usually abused. But this one, it seems like it was maintained and it's got 84,000 miles on the clock. Why would it just randomly out of nowhere start knocking and fail? So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna get in here, we're gonna tear it down. I pulled the covers off already. We're gonna take a look at the top, top end and the front end here. Then we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna check the bottom end. I really think it's either a rod or main bearing that failed on here. Uh, so let's go ahead, we'll let you listen, take a listen to how this engine sounds. It's like growling whenever you accelerate. Take a listen. All right, so let's take a look around the engine. Now this engine came in, like I said, it was knocking and growling, it had oil consumption issues, stuff like that. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, it ran fine and all that stuff, but it, obviously it was a, definitely an issue. There's metal in the oil, uh, definitely need, need to be changed out, it was failed. Uh, but there was no you know, rods coming through the block or anything catastrophic like that going on here. So just do a quick walk around real quick up top here and I'll get into some details, show you a few things I found already. Now, when this engine came in, um, you know, I basically had the knock, the metal and the oil. It was consuming oil, like I said. So it was obviously time for an engine. I did not tear anything down into there. It was pretty darn obvious at that point. But just looking at it now, you can tell it was changed based on, you know, five, six, seven thousand mile intervals, and it should have never failed. So a few things I noted. So we're looking around over here. You know, this cam, cook, this cam lobe wear is a little concerning for the mileage, but I understand it's under high pressure, especially in the nose there. Uh, but you look at the cam caps, pull a few of them off on here, and the grooving on here is quite substantial. This one's actually catching my nail. And yeah, that could happen later on. I see this quite a bit on the higher mileage uh, 543 valve, stuff like that. And they're just fine, but these newer engines, they do not tolerate it at all and obviously with this kind of mileage it should not be happening so that's definitely of concern um the other thing i noted i started pulling vct solenoids if you're ever concerned about oil circulating through your engine your vcts have very small screens on them so you usually, usually catch it right there and this one you can see it's quite substantial it's good sized chunks Looking down in there, you can't really see anything. It's just where it's being fed in. Um, it's obviously the screen's doing its job and it's capturing it. And I looked at it, all of them at the inlet right there have it on there, all four of them. So the front end here, as far as the timing components, you know, they all like fine, nothing's cracked or broken or weird. Um, but the one thing I did notice though, is you know getting this front cover back on is a little tricky in the vehicle and stuff like that. You see there's some sealant gloves right here when they're trying to get back on. Um, the, and you can see uh, the oil control solenoid right here. There you go. Um, has sealant all around it and the inside of it and stuff like that. And a lot of times these kind of pop out of the metal casting right here. And you got a zip time up here and hold them in place. Because you're pulling the cover off, it kind of rocks it and it pops it off of there. And that's fine. He's at time, they're never a problem. It goes over this wheel control solenoid right here for the pump. Um, but this one is missing the rest of the metal casting. So it's, you know, it's cast alone. You can just tap it and it'll crack off of there, especially being this thin. And you can see down here, it goes down a little bit, over and back up and connects to here. That's all missing. And that obviously happened during the timing job. See all the sealants in there. I'm trying, them fighting to get the cover back. I know from my early days when I first started doing these, and it was kind of weird compared to the first gens. I remember having to fight uh, past that oil control solenoid and the seal around it. So 
either it was an inexperienced tech or a guy that just didn't give a darn anymore. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it has the new phasers and stuff like that on there. Check out these solenoids real quick. There's nothing really substantial up top here besides, yeah, that, which I'll get you to focus there. There we go. That's yeah, nasty. New engines cannot tolerate that at all. Look at that. So there's definitely something going on down below. Um, it's obviously something in the oiling system on the way up to hit the heads that is as introducing the, the metal. Uh, it's not metal that was in the pan being forced through the system because remember it goes through the screen and then it goes through the filter before it ever feeds the rest of the engine. So this is inside on its way up to the solenoids that the metal's being introduced in the system. So uh, otherwise, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna flip it over, take a look at that bottom end. This thing was growling big time. So we're gonna check it out and see what's going on down there. And we'll take a look in the pan too. Okay, now with the engine flipped over, we can take a look at the bottom end of the engine up top here, nice and clear. So the way an engine works in general is they have an oil pan, an oil sump, and it holds the oil, the reservoir, Meanwhile, this pickup goes down into the bottom of it, has a large debris screen up top here to catch all the large stuff before it actually gets sucked into uh, the oil pump on the front nose of the crankshaft. That creates pressure and flow, goes right through the oil filter to be cleaned right away, and then it starts feeding the mains, the rods, and eventually the valve train in the heads, and of course, the VCT system. So if we're getting metal of VCTs, it's definitely coming uh, after the filter. So something in here is creating it and on its way up to the heads. So let's take a look at the screen here real quick, see if we can see anything inside of there. It didn't look too bad, but there's a, the, whole, the whole thing inside of here is a screen. This is just the opening right here, it's oval. So yeah, that's not good to right there to begin with. So that looks like sh uh, strips strips of bearing material. Pull some of that out of there and see what's going on. Like, I don't see that as being a, let me check it out. Yeah, it's real thin, like bearing material. It's not a, you know, a ring, an oil control or compression ring, like that one kind of looks like. Let me get close up to this one. Yeah, it's real real thin like that see that so the whole screen is kind of full of that yeah this thing was definitely toast but i want to see why um let's do, let's go ahead and take a look at the pan uh the pan had a lot of glitter in it you know coming out when we first drained it for the wheel for the engine swap uh see so just pull it down like that a little bit you can see some of that in there let me get it in closer, you guys can see. There's some bigger chunks in there. Move it around a little bit. Like side to side. Kind of catch some of the, that's down there. There's not too much in there. There's lots of glitter in there, stuff like that, and those bigger pieces that were kind of floating, uh, they got sucked up into the actual pickup on here. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pull off uh, the upper oil pan here, the pickup and all that stuff. And we'll try to gain access to the mains and all that stuff. See what's going on here. All right, let's get into the lower end here. So again, we're looking around down underneath here and I'm not seeing anything as far as any kind of bearing material sticking out of either the mains or the rods here. So we're gonna have to dive in a little bit deeper here. So I'm looking at these, each one of these rod caps on here, and I'm trying to move them up and down, and I'm not getting any movement. I'm checking down by the wrist pin, I'm not getting any movement. Um, the one thing I want to note is if you're looking at something, you're tearing it down like this, and you see this side-to-side -side movement like this, see it like that? That's perfectly normal. There's always going to be some kind of clearance for oil clearance in there. Uh, the up and down movement, is what we're checking on, and I don't feel anything there on any of these. And looking down in there. Now, one thing I did note, if you pull back a little bit here, I'll pull a, I pulled, but at least these two right here, I pulled the caps on already, 
and of course with that metal coming through, I believe from the main, um, it's being fed into here. So the backside here, you ignore that that is not contacting any kind of rotating surface. It's staying put with the cap there. Uh, what we're looking at is this side right here. So you can zoom in a little bit on that one. Let me kind of get it. So uh, they're all, well, the other ones are even worse, but like right here in the middle, they were getting a, a good streak of uh, a pitting, I would say. You see, that's like pitting right there. I mean, obviously that's yeah, not okay uh, for this mileage, but I don't think that's where our, our noise is coming from. And of course, all those big streaks of, uh, of metal we found in the pickup there. So I am really thinking, based on the way it sounded and everything else, that it is the mains. So something got into there at some point, somehow. Wheel pump, I looked down in the inlet there, you can see the veins and all that stuff. It was not failed either. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna pull off a main or two. And I really, I really wanna find where it's coming from. Okay, so once I found that first rod bearing with all that pitting in it, went ahead and pulled the rest of the rod caps, checked the bearings, they all have the same exact pitting back to front on there. No absolute failures, no clearance issues, but they had a lot of pitting. Not normal, but not the source of our noise. So I went ahead and I checked the wrist pin side of the rod, seemed intact, the piston, the cylinder wall, everything seemed intact. So now at this point, we're back to our original assumption based on the way it sounded before we pulled it out is that it's from the lower end here. It's in the lower end, it's coming from the mains. So let's check it out. Pulled all the bolts already. Let's check it out. So this one's basically intact, okay? First thing you'll notice, you pull it out and the actual bearing comes out with the cap in here. It's in place, flush on both sides, okay? So this bearing right here, you can see right here, the, this, this red coating on here is an anti-friction, anti-wear coating. Um, that's perfectly normal and that's gonna wear away at some point in time. So right here, this right here, I would consider that normal wear, right here. This is getting a little pitted and a little weird. This groove is not normal, but otherwise, it looks perfectly fine. And like I said earlier, our thrust, thrust uh, washers, thrust bearing, perfectly fine. Look at that, not even a wear on there. And if you look at our journal, it looks pretty damn good too. So we're good there. And that's how it should look, that's how it should come out, right? Let's put that back in there. Now we found an issue with these two right here, and you'll start to see this is where our metal's coming from. So the first thing you notice, you pull it out and there's no bearing, okay? There we go. So you see there's no bearing and based on the way it looks on there, it looks like the bearing is actually spinning or moving inside of there. You guys tell me, that's the way it looks to me. So then you start looking down at the actual bearing. And I'll try to get it out of the pick. And if you look down inside of here, you can see the bearing is actually spun in the housing. So that doesn't just lift up and out of there anymore. So we're gonna have to actually work it around there and then try to pull it up and out of there. There we go. So you can see in the back side, the back side shouldn't have any, any marks like this where it has rotational marks. See that rotational scuffing on there? So it's spinning inside of the housing there. And of course it spun and it was like this instead of just like this, perfect and flush with the cap. On this side, you can see that coating is totally gone and it's the, it's totally worn away on here. There's a lip right here, it's much higher. You can zoom in a little bit there. You can see that lip, it's way higher. Let me try to catch it, my, see right there? So that one side is way higher. It's how much of this is actually worn away. There you can see a little bit. I think that is the black anti-friction coating on there. It's left. But you can see in the back side, you see how it's spinning? Yeah. Now the actual journal on there looks okay. Um, I mean, obviously it needs machining and everything else, but you can see since it's moving around in there, that's where it's starting to, you know, almost like shave off like a brick of cheese and we're shaving off slices. That's what we're doing. Yeah, so that is where it's coming from. So for whatever reason, the bearings, the main bearings are spinning. This one, same thing. You can see it on there. It's almost like heat marks right there, you see it? Yeah. 
So that's that. And this one, I believe, yeah, it's not, it's not straight in there. Yeah, it's all the way over. So I gotta try to spin this one and get it up and out of there. This one's really seized in here. Yeah, that one is seized in there. This one is also peeling off a bit. Let me try to get something a little bigger. There we go. A little too far, but this one's basically the same thing, if not worse. So I'll try to pick this one up and out of there and take a look at it. There we go. So again, you see in the back side here, zoom in a little bit and focus. You can see how it's spinning on there. It's real sharp. And this one has the same thing as that ridge here where you can see the actual bearing is worn down so far. This was the original material. So this is hanging outside the area there of wear. So that's where we're shaving off pieces. I'm gonna try to get this side out. I don't think I can. But you can see this one's a little more worn. Yeah, so it's definitely a main bearing issue. Now over here, if you look at this one, this one, uh, like the uh, the last main cap on here, has the, the deep grooving in there. I can catch my fingernail on it easily, even through the gloves. Has a coating, and then one side of it basically has that extra wear on there. This is pretty smooth. I would say if it was even all the way across, it'd be normal. But it's all on one side here. And then they had this one, look at that, that uh, main journal on there. It's absolutely beautiful. It's like a mirror finish, it's, it's real nice. So that's how it should look and by comparison. You come over here and look at this one right here. You see the grooving in it? And then back here, you can see the movement. So that, that, that's what's making, and you see all the metal in there too. That's what was making all that friggin' noise. All that movement in there, that clearance issue, and the bearing spinning in there. So that that's it's a lot of tear down, but we found the actual point, and I figured that was it. But a lot of you out there wanted to know exactly what's making all that noise. It's a weird noise. It sounded like it was deep in the lower end inside the belly of the beast, and I think we found it. That's all for now. See you guys next time.